So it's just kind of a um I don't know what this is, kind of a it's just really crappy carpet. <laughs> um plastic, I guess this is plastic. It's like a clear plastic on the back and then the loop carpet which looks nice this cut pile carpet is for 73.74 this is the correct carpet so I'm getting correct the correct carpet back in here the original carpet um, I wish I would have hung on to it you know back in 1982 or 81 or whenever it was that I replaced my carpet um, you know there were big holes in it I remember there was a big hole right here all the way through the jute from somebody's heel I think and then there was another hole up there and it was just in really poor condition but it had it was the original carpet and I've got the carpet out, the jute out, and um, just taking a quick video. So I'm going to put the sound deadener back in it, the sound deadener, I took all the sound deadener out of it when I did the carpet the first time. I don't know, I don't remember the condition of the sound deadener, I just don't remember, but I just want to take a video and just, you know, look at the floorboards, floorboards are, floor pans are, you know, perfect. little spot here where uh, something hit it from the bottom pushed it up right there other than that everything looks really good and solid and tight so I tackled the sound deadener um, it did not come out the way I envisioned. It was really a puzzle to try to figure out what went where. I still don't think it's right, but I'm going to go with it. So these are the pieces that you get. And they, it's fairly close and not exact, this drawing to what was in the box, but, um, you know, like... This ended up going on the passenger side instead of the driver's side. And down here it says driver's side. This ended up going under the rear floor instead of under the rear seat. So, like I just, that piece going there just didn't work, didn't make any sense that piece i don't know had to be totally cut up in order to make there to be any semblance of fitting i'm still not happy with it but i'm going with it and then there's a piece which is this piece this number two for the console just didn't make any sense i mean it was ridiculous so I'm just going to leave it and um, I'm going to go with just jute. I may lay, lay a couple of pieces if I can find a, a long piece to maybe go across there. But uh, anyway, this is how it came out. It came out okay, I guess. I've got the 
sound deadener and the jute padding all laid down in the front half of the car. Um, the sound deadener went down in the same place as it was cut out for. I just added a few pieces around the shift hump on each side and on the top, the very top. Um, and then I just laid the so I used some 777 on back of the sound deadener to sort of keep it in place to the floor pans and then I used 777 on back of the jute and then laid it down to contour the the floor pan and it's working pretty good um, I think the carpet will go in a lot better so I'm just going to work on the rest of it. I don't think it's going to be that difficult from this point forward. Just putting the sound deadener in and laying the jute down. Up there it's a little different because there's a lot more contour and stuff. So, Okay, I'm going to keep going. I just got the jute in. It took about, I don't know, four or five hours to do. It came out really nice. It's sitting on top of sound deadener. So that's one thing that it didn't have with the old carpet was sound deadener. Now it's got sound deadener. I don't know what, how effective it's going to be for deadening sound, but you know. But I've got the. Jute, um, you know, laying down with 3M77, and it's it's really holding down to the contour of the floor pan. Shift top. Got that. Uh, pressure buzzer for the passenger seat back seat oops working on the sill plate had the, the dang little they, they put these little tabs in here and they just tack them in and there's no tab back there so I had to drill a hole find a long screw and drill a hole so that's how that one goes in there's no no tab back there so I'll finish that up tomorrow putting the kick panels back in and um, this is the duct seal that I bought at Home Depot it's this stuff it's um about a buck a bar, something like that, two bucks a bar. Um, Gardner Bender duck seal. It's non-hardening, just like the original stuff. It's kind of a dark gray. <clears throat> so I just put a thin. Here, here it is. I just put a thin. And I just went down the side of it with a putty knife and just cut out a little sliver of it. So I don't want it real thick over here. And just went around where it seals <clears throat> against the body. This is all excess. They really lathered it on at the, at the factory. Put a big, wide thing on. But I'm just going to kind of put it back to where it kind of seals against the, the body and do the best I can. I mean it was just you know everywhere on here but I'm not gonna do that. So and I was able to find a solution for the seat belt situation that was going on. 
Problem was, was the seat belt, the seat lever was hitting this seat belt cover. So what I did is I sawed it off with a hacksaw. It's gone. No, just kidding. Um, this is the passenger seat back. So I just switched them. So that's the old driver's seat back, which is over there. And this is the passenger. And the levers are now on the inside. So it's kind of different, but you know, it's not a permanent solution, it's a temporary solution that works. So now I can have the seat all the way back and not mess anything up destroy something so that's done so the seats are in fitment is really nice the little protector is still over the Fisher logo I'll take those off but it Came out really nice. So you can see the difference there between the original rear sill plate and the reproduction sill plates. Came out really nice. And the driver's sill plate required a little bit of surgery, but fit really nice. Parking brake right now is engaged. So turn on the key to the on position. Release the parking brake. And the seatbelt warning system engages. So, since I'm sitting here in the driver's seat, the only way to, there's two ways to stop the buzzer. Put my seatbelt on, which stops the buzzer, or Put the parking brake on. It goes out. Parking brake off. Parking brake on. So let me put my seatbelt on and I will engage the Passenger seat. So my seatbelt is on. So if somebody, if a passenger was to sit, get in, seatbelt warning. So the only way for them to, they'd have to put their seatbelt on to disengage the system. So it's functioning and working correctly.